TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth, where we're exploring all sorts of business topics. Experts from around the world join me, your host, Diane Helbig, for a conversation where they share their expertise with all of you. Take what you need, when you need it. Featured on Inc.com, Forbes, and MSNBC's Your Business, this podcast is recognized as one of the best podcasts for small business sales, leadership, social media, and more. When it comes to business, Accelerate Your Business Growth has got it covered. And now on with the show. My guest today is Sam Tornatori. Sam is an accomplished author and leading expert in the field of time management with a published track record of helping people and businesses break free from the constraints of feeling like they never have enough time and a seemingly endless to-do list. He's helped over 10,000 people over the last 20 years eliminate the words, I don't have enough time in my life, and I'll do it tomorrow. Thanks so much for being here, Sam. My pleasure, Diane. My pleasure. Thrilled to have you here. I love this subject because I think we all, at times, if, if not consistently, feel like we there aren't enough hours in a day. Um, but I am I'm curious about what are some common myths about productivity? Look, uh, thanks very much for having me here, Diane. I'm, I'm really looking forward to just sharing some insights with your listeners. And I think what I'd like to start off with, which is probably the most common myth, is that people feel like they need to overcomplicate the time management solution, whether it be time. I actually don't usually like that word time management. It's all about life really and getting more out of your life and more out of your business life. But without a doubt, people look for solutions and they immediately look for solutions that are way too complex. In other words, they look more than what they need to. And they're not happy with with something that stares them right in their faces to an easy or a simple path to improve their time. They've got to find more. So what that means is sometimes they invest in a lot of complex programs. They invest in a lot of uh, complex scheduling material and different things like that. And, and look, that just adds to the complexity. I mean, you think about what you're trying to achieve. Less is what you want. You don't need more. And that's probably the most common thing I see people struggle with instead of looking at the basics and the simplistic version. And hopefully that's what we're going to impart on a lot of the viewers today is uh, because that's not my world. And as you can appreciate, someone who's in teaching productivity, I'm not about creating more work for people. I'm actually about creating less. Right. (laughs) I love this idea of simplifying. I I think – that's great. I agree. I think we do complicate this. So, um, so let's talk about that. What yeah. you know? I, I mean, how do we flip that? And and what are the things that we can be doing that don't create more work for us? Yeah, great question. And and look, let's start off with the absolute simple basics. And you know, when I when I speak to audiences, I say, look. If you've come here to listen to hours of material, you're going to be disappointed because why would I spend an hour saying something that I could say in five or ten minutes? And, you know, you can almost see the relief on the audience's <laughs> face, right? So when it, this is the simple way I look at it. You simply will not have time to do all the things you want to do in your business and all the things you want to do in your life if we take it to that extreme. You won't. There's too much to do. There's too many choices. There's too many activities. It's endless. But you will always have time to do the most important thing. So that's a differentiator. So this is not about 
trying to fill in and do more. This is about taking some of the things out and leaving in or leaving space for what's important. And that's the first critical distinction that people need to make. They think about everything they want to do, but what I say to people is, look, out of that list, tell me what is the two or three most important things. Let's forget about all the other stuff. There's got to be some priorities in there. So my question to people usually is, what is the most important thing you want to get done? Now, they often say, well, it's all important. (laughs) I say, (laughs) okay, well, what are the consequences of you not doing those things? And the one that has the greatest consequence, the greatest impact in your life, the biggest downside or the biggest gain, then that's got to give you some perspective at what's the most important thing is. And then it's a matter of really putting all your 100% focus on doing that thing. And there's some ways and strategies to make sure that that's the case. But in a nutshell, Diane, you know, if I had to preach one three-minute sentence (laughs) or three-minute sermon, that would be it. Get rid of everything and stick with what's important. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense to me. I um, would like to actually dig in on the get rid of everything else. So. Because I think that's one of the places that trips people up. I know what I hear people say is, uh, well, I I don't have processes written down or it's just quicker and easier for me to do it myself. So what do you say to that? Look, in in some respects, there there is a real minority of things that are quick and easy to do for yourself. And I get that, right? But at some point, take a step back and work out a process for those things, delegate them, and then you'll never have to worry about them again. So if that's genuinely true, then you have to at some point just to create a little slice of time and then it becomes a priority to do that, to work out how that's to be done and delegate that to someone, teach that to someone, make sure, and there's an art to delegation, which we can talk about if you like, but make sure that they're aware of what needs to be done. And and then you don't have to worry about it again. See, a lot of the times we feel that we have to do everything because yeah. we're control freaks, yeah. right? Yeah. That, that comes down to a, a belief of fear or scarcity or no one's as good as what we can do. You know, you've got to give people a bit of credit. <laughs> they're actually pretty good at doing things if you've got staff, right? You've got to get the right staff, obviously. But when you set yourself up where you say, Look, I've got all these things that I do that probably someone else can do. And in fact, someone else might actually love doing them. Well, then that's the art of delegation. And the more you structure your world around that, then the more it's going to free you up then to do the things that are really important. This is so great. I I have to tell you that the thing that I really grabbed onto was that I, that completely answers the people who say the stuff that I just said was um, make it this a priority to Hmm. get those processes written down and, and delegate it when that's the priority, that's the thing you're doing. That's how that gets done. I think that that is great. I don't think people look at it that way. So that's um, it's like a light bulb moment for me. It makes a lot of sense. It's yeah, absolutely. Right, with everything else. Yeah. I mean, look, the other way I say to people is that, look, there is in your business, and I say this to your listeners, right, I'm sure, think of one thing in your business that you do that only you can do, right, that, that, that produces the great result. You might be the only person that will talk to a customer or make a sale or you might be involved in doing – you know, the product delivery, but th- there's something that you do that's that's unique to you, right? So that's the thing that makes you bring in money. Now, here's a question. If you could do more of that one thing, then chances are, well, let's even say you doubled it. If you went from your activity of doing that one thing and you're doing it to double it, chances are pretty high you're going to make a lot more money, would you not? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if that's the one thing you do, then focus on that and get, basically the rule is 
everything else that's not at that pay rate, delegate to someone else. Right, right. All right, so so let's talk a little bit about delegating. Yep. How do we do it the right way? Look, once again, a couple of simple steps. And the first path to delegating is obviously selecting someone that you trust, that you know is competent and has the skills. And that's a challenge because everyone tries to just give their things off to other people without really giving really thought as to, you know, who that person is and who the right person is and where they've got the capacity. I mean, look, you take in my case. I do not, even though I, I was originally an accountant, I originally specialised in admin management, all that stuff. These days, Diane, I hate it, right? I, I can't. It just doesn't get into my mindset. My, I, I, my craft is this, speaking, educating, helping people, getting involved in people's conversations, helping them flush out some of the lies they tell themselves in their own business, and that's what I enjoy. That's my value. No one else in my organisation can do that as well as I can. So I don't spend any of my time doing the hack work, as I call it, you know, scheduling. I can't even stand looking for a file. You know, I say to one of my team, well, where's this file? Can you get it for me and just put it on my desktop? <laughs> so, so, you know, getting – now, the point that I'm making is that there are people who love doing admin. Yeah. There are people that love doing scheduling, organising, filing. Let them do what they do best. That's their craft. They enjoy it. They love it. So that's the first thing is to create a really good match as to who you're going to delegate these things to. There's no point you delegating to someone who's like me, who might, you know, enjoys sales or enjoys in dealing with people. If, you know, if that's not their area, that they're going to hate it too. So that's the first step. And then second step is to be really clear and explain to them what you want done and what dele- what needs to be mm-hmm. delegated, right? But here's the question that needs to accompany any time you delegate anything to someone. You say to them, are you clear on what needs to be done here? Now, I know that sounds simple, right, but you want to make sure that they answer that question and they say yes, obviously. But here's the follow-up question <laughs> that you need to ask. This is where a lot of people tend to go wrong. You've got to ask this. Is there anything you need from me to get this task done or from anybody else for you to complete this task? Now, if the answer is no, then you go down the process of defining what it is that they need and you give it to them, right? But then the same thing. Now, are you clear? Is everything else we need? No. Okay, is there anything else you need from me or any other resources required from anybody else? No? Okay, great. Delegation accomplished, right? It's over to them. Now, this is the final thing, Diane, and this is where people go wrong. You simply need to say to them, when will I get that done? Bye. And you've got to, you've got to have a date. <laughs> and if you don't, have that, you don't have those three things, yeah. that's where delegation goes wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's, there's no clear expectation. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I agree with you. Yeah. And, 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 and you've got to be able to say to them so that, you know, once you delegate it, you want to feel that relief than knowing that, right, there's nothing I've got to worry about here. All I got, all I know is that come that due date, it's going to arrive and you can rest easy because what you need as a, as a business entrepreneur is that you need to go about your day with nothing in the back of your mind thinking, oh, I wonder if that task is going to get done. Oh, that's right. I've got that thing I've got to do. No, you want to go through your day saying, you know what? I'm at peace. All those things are taken care of. All I've got to worry about is the things that, that, that I enjoy doing, which is making the money or bringing in, bringing in the process that, that, you know, fund the business. So, those elements are really important, especially that one where you say, do you need anything from me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Because when you when you said the, the first part about asking, you know, are we clear? I've noticed in, in working with my clients that they'll, um, they'll explain something and the other person will be nodding a lot, but yep. they don't get that confirmation from them that they really understand what's expected of them. 
And yeah. step, right. And then they all walk away and it takes too long or it doesn't get done correctly or, you know, whatever the the bad news is. And it's frustrating, which I get. But I we can't really count on people necessarily to um, tell us the truth. Right. Yeah. That, that if we say to them, do you know, so d- is this clear that if it's not, they're going to say, no, it's not. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, spot on. yeah. So, so I like the rest of that too, with, you know, what do you need from me? And, and when can I expect to get this by that? That's sort of puts a, a bow on it. Right. Yeah. Spot on. And also too, you know, if you've got a few people in your organization, then this, this becomes a very easy way to manage people as well. Like, let's say it doesn't get done. You know, we're going off a little bit down the path here, but but let's say, because I think it might be helpful for some of your listeners, but but let's say people aren't doing it properly, they're not getting it. Then you can say, okay, what part of the process wasn't clear here? Because yeah. you said to me you were clear. Uh, you said to me there was nothing you needed from me, and you told me a date. So yeah. three things that didn't work. So wh- where's the where's the problem here? You know, in a gentle way. Sure. And then you say to them, well, you know, <laughs> and you just deal with it because sometimes, and that's how you, you flush out the better people to the other people because, you know, I've had situations where I've said to people, my staff, and say, look, uh, I need to rely on what you're telling me. And if you can't deliver that, then that's okay. We'll put you in another part of the business or we'll we'll do something else. But you can't keep going in this role. It's vital to me that when I delegate, it's out of my mind. Yeah, well, see, that that's key, right? It, really sharing and explaining what, uh, why it's important to you that they take it and run <clears throat> with it and are successful with it instead of assuming that they know. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. if there's one thing that I've learned, you know, I've had over, I was trying to actually have a count before we came on here, you know, probably over 23 years of corporate space where I have managed large teams of people in this admin space. That's where my background came from, which is why I don't like doing it anymore. <laughs> but I, I was really fortunate. I had good teams and, and my leadership up would compliment me on how I'd run the business and run teams. And and what come down to simply letting people know that they need to be responsible for their end of that little cog in the wheel. Like everyone's got everyone's important in a, in a role, and if someone doesn't do their part, then the whole thing shuts down. Right. right. So you know, a chain's as strong as the weakest link. So I found that the most effective thing was simply let people know first of all, hey you have a really important part to play. It's not just, you know, no big deal here. Uh, Even if you're the receptionist, how you answer that phone (laughs) dictates a lot. I used to be really passionate about that. You know, you've got to answer that phone like with, with real responsibility, like it's your business. How do you want people to be greeted? Now, that's a simple example, right? But, but I let everybody know that they are a responsible part to play and it was actually their responsibility to deliver on that part. Yeah, I, I love that. And and it, it speaks to the delegation piece, right? Because I'm so glad we're having this conversation in this way, because so many people think to themselves, you know, it was what I was saying before, well, they're not going to do it as well as I am, or it, it's going to be difficult or this, that, or the other thing. But the more we're sharing what our expectations are and that they have a responsibility in there. We're setting them up for success. We're laying a better foundation for all of this. And so the delegation goes more smoothly because there's there's no doubt, there's no question about what the expectation is. Yeah. Yeah. You said it said it perfectly, Diane. Thanks. Now, speaking of these people who are listening and thinking to themselves, yeah. okay, I get it. It makes sense, you know, whatever. Um, but they're not necessary. you know, they're, they're also the ones who are saying they're just not enough hours in a day. What, what is something that, that you could say to them? Listen, 
when when you stop listening to this episode, here's one thing you can do to start getting your time back. Is there like one thing that you would suggest to them? Yeah, I'll actually give you two things. Ooh. And one of them already touched on. And I would say to those listeners, first of all, when when people struggle with uh, taking a path, right, saying, okay, I want to improve, but I'm not quite getting there, and I hear a lot of excuses. Well, it's a topic probably of another podcast, but I say, look, you don't want it bad enough. <laughs> yeah. right? you, you don't want it bad enough. You're actually caught in a little bit of a comfort zone, and, you know, my, my – my, you know, my approach to people is quite contrary and sometimes it sort of hits them a bit, but but that's why people, you know, that's why my clients use me because uh, I'm a truth teller. Um, right. I say to people, look, if you really wanted to improve your productivity, you know, we probably wouldn't even be having this conversation <laughs> if you really, <laughs> really wanted to. But anyway, it's a topic for another, another conversation later. But the first thing I would say is what I already said before, and it comes down to really identifying the most important task to do. I'd even say go to the extent of the night before, you've got your list of to-do things, pick the one thing on that list that is the most important thing to do and, and do that before you do anything else at the start of your day the next day. So that's probably my number one golden tip. And if you could do that and discipline yourself to do that every day, Watch out, Diane. All right? Watch out. Boy, that, you're that's, kidding. You know, that that's you know, you just yeah. do that one thing regularly, it will blow your mind. Right. Now, there's a few things that, that help with that, but that's the starting point. But if I had to give a second tip that's probably just as powerful, and this is the one that once again a lot of people don't like to sort of become uh, acknowledge that I don't want to face the reality of it, Ev, but here it is. Of all that list that you've got to do and of all the things that you say in your mind you've got to do and all the activities, I can guarantee that there are things on that list that are no, not only are they not important, they're not urgent at all. So the other approach is the other way. Go through your list Ask yourself a really heartfelt question. You say, is this important? And, and in which case the answer should be if it's not that important and it's not that urgent. So if it's not urgent and it's not important, why is it on your list? In which case, eliminate. Yeah. There is so many things that we do that serve no business value or no value from a productivity point of view it's like just mental chewing gum and and just get rid of those things. Now, I guarantee you, in this has never failed me, in everybody's life there will be things that you put into that description, not important, not urgent. Take them out and you will find that you are have got more time. So remember how I said at the start, it's not about filling up, you know, doing more things. It's actually about eliminating and that's a contrarian point of view that not many people like to talk about because they want to schedule everything. But my view is take some stuff out. You know, I love that. And I'm curious, do you have a sense of why we keep those things on our list? Look, sometimes uh, we're bored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes we, we want to, we, we fool ourselves into thinking that I got a famous saying that I use a lot. It's like people confuse activity with productivity. <laughs> so I think people feel justified by doing things. They think, oh, look, I've been busy today, you know, especially if they're, if they're accountable to someone, a partner or a boss or whatever, say, look, boss, you know, look how much I got done today. I did all this stuff and, you know, and if I was your boss, I'd go, yeah, that's all great, but none of it's important to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it does come down to sometimes boredom. It comes down to lack of motivation. It also comes down to, you know, lack of really, um, you know, what you're trying to achieve, you know, what's your true purpose. You know, if you're, if you're driven and you're motivated by something that you really want and is genuine and you own that thing, you're not going to spend too much time watching TV. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's so true. 
Oh my gosh. I, I Sam, I, I so appreciate your perspective and and this information that you're sharing with everyone. I think it's something that we all needed to hear at least once. Uh, so thank you so much for spending this time with us. Will you uh, tell the listeners, you know, how they can find you, you know, whatever you've got going on that you think they should know, please? Yeah, look, absolutely. It's quite simple. If, if any of the listeners have have, have uh, listened to this and have resonated with anything, you, chances are you might even have more questions than, than answers. So, look, I, I invite you to uh, have a consultation with me. Uh, I'll dive deeper into your specific situation because I know everyone's different and, and I'm sure people are saying to themselves, yeah, that's all good, Sam, but you don't understand my situation. <laughs> and so, well, you know, I'm happy to. So for those listeners that genuinely resonate with the material and feel like they want some specific perspective, then go to www.bookwithsam.com. Uh, it's a, it just goes straight to my website. It's just a shortcut, Book With Sam. Mm-hmm. And on there, you can fill out the form. It's just you can apply for a short consultation, half an hour or so, and I might be able to provide you some insights and some uh, some ideas and maybe give you a breakthrough that you possibly hadn't realised before by understanding a situation a bit deeper. No pressure, no selling. It's just diagnostic only. If that's something that your viewers will value, then I'll open up some bookings in my calendar and um, go from there. They're welcome to. That's terrific. I will make sure that that's in the show notes so that they can take advantage of that. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. My pleasure. That'd be great. Uh, Wonderful. Like I said, thank you. And listeners, Mm. thank you. You are who we're doing this for. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, a production of Evergreen Podcasts. Discover more episodes of this podcast and explore others at evergreenpodcast.com. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And if you're looking to get your sales strategy headed in the right direction, pick up a copy of Succeed Without Selling on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Imagine how fast we could solve the world's biggest problems if more SaaS startups would gain traction sooner. Welcome to the Tech Entrepreneur on a Mission podcast. This podcast is dedicated to sharing experiences from B2B SaaS CEOs who are going above and beyond to deliver change that is noticed. You will hear their secrets and learn what is required to build a SaaS business that the world starts talking about and keeps talking about and how to overcome the roadblocks to do so.